Now, um, to something completely different, The Three Loves of Persimmon by Cassandra Golds. This is a beautiful fable. It's about a shy and solitary um, young woman called Persimmon Polidori, who's an unlikely rebel. She's um, disappointed and being cast out by her family for pursuing the frivolity of flowers over a more serious career in vegetables. And she lives alone, pining or dreaming of love in a heart-shaped florist shop on the top floor of a vast underground railway station. And five floors below, there's a tiny mouse called Epiphany who dreams of there being somewhere else away from the crash and clatter of trains arriving and departing every six uh, minutes. From a passing butterfly epiphany, he is of a place of flowers, and that comes to symbolise everything about being somewhere else. Because epiphany has never seen a flower, and persimmon, five stories above, dreams of love, and she's never known love. She has, this is the bit I love best about this book, she has a favourite book. It's called The Heart of Things by Martin Devine, and it symbolises everything that she holds dear. And the world's greatest critic gave it the worst review that he had ever given any book in his entire career. And he killed it dead. Nobody bought the book because it was terrible, according to the greatest critic in the world. But poor old Persimmon, it was the book that spoke to her, spoke to her heart. It was the one that she loved. And she really was searching for love. She was searching for someone else who loved the book that she loved best. And of course, that speaks to me. We all have books that we hold to our heart that speak to us. And, um, of course, eventually being a fable and a fairy, a fairy tale, I guess. Epiphany and, and Persimmon meet in a life-changing moment where they both will finally achieve their heart's desires. It's gorgeous. It's girly, 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 girly. But, I mean, it is. It's, it's beautiful. And it does have the most beautiful language. Um, beautiful book. Um, my next book... I really like this, Six Impossible Things by Fiona Wood. It's a fairy tale of a different type. Um, and it's one that I've already given to teenagers and they've already come back and told me how much they loved it. It's a funny, sweet reversal of fortune um, novel and it has its protagonist is 15-year-old Dan Surreal and his life He's an absolute mess. He's the most lovable dork. But his family's lost everything. They're bankrupt. They have no money. His dad's gay and has left the family. His mum is trying to set up a wedding cake business. And she gets no business because she keeps talking her customers out of getting married. <laughs> you, know, you know, he's having a terrible time at his new school. All he wants to be is not a complete nerd and fails abjectly at this. And the new house smells of dog urine because it came with a sitting tenant canine that's elderly called Howard. And everything's a mess and he has an impossible crush on this unattainable girl next door because he does something terrible. He sneaks into her attic and he reads her diaries, her personal diaries. And he knows everything about her and he knows she's perfect for him. But he hasn't met her yet. <laughs> the title's a nod to Through the Looking Glass when Alice, Alice tells the White Queen, there's no use trying, one can't believe impossible things. I dare say you haven't had much practice, says the Queen. When I was your age, I always did it for half an hour a day. Why, sometimes I believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Of course, impossible for the White Queen is um, merely un unbelievable or inconceivable. Um, for Dan, his six impossible things are completely unachievable. Or are they? Because, of course, Dan's name is an anagram for Cinderella, Dan Surreal. And yes, there's a climactic dance scene and a midnight curfew, and when Dan accidentally puts the band out of action on the day of the dance, completely ruining everything for everyone, some unexpected helpers come out of the woodwork, not unlike a fairy godmother, to save his adorable hide. So much to love, delightful story. Now, have I actually gotten through five already? Yeah. Good, because my sixth is um, a book that I've championed before. It's one of my favourite reads across all genres, and it's The Piper's Son by Melina Marchetta. I actually think this is a standout young adult title uh, this year. Yes, it's for mature readers, but 
My teenagers were blooded on looking for Ella Brandy and saving Francesca. Two of their, Connor's favourite book was looking for Ella Brandy in high school. Bridies was saving Francesca. And I really don't think that um, this is going to disappoint them. This is just a wonderful book. It's a standalone novel, but it takes up the story of a group of friends from saving Francesca. It's five years down the track, and now Tom Mackey is the one who needs saving. He's looking for oblivion. He's drowning himself in drink and drugs. And he's trying to forget the horrible um, loss of his uncle, who was blown to bits in a bombing in London. He's trying to forget um, the friends he's pushed away, the family that's imploded due to alcoholism, loss and grief. And he's really in a mess. Um, and I think that his journey back from the edge is a really heart-wrenching one. But because it's Melina Marchetta writing, it also has a lot of love and humour. It's so lovingly crafted, this book. She has this ability to make you feel for her characters that um, I was so transfixed by this book. I remember reading it over breakfast one morning, thinking, I'll just, I'll just finish this chapter. I'll just finish this chapter. And the milk went sour, and I read the whole thing, and I was howling, because I love a book that makes me cry. And this made me laugh, and it made me cry. And I gave it to my husband, who um, told me he doesn't read young adult fiction. He doesn't even particularly like reading fiction, because he's a non-fiction sort of guy. And he took it, I packed it into his bag on a surf trip, and he um, emailed me from Singapore. And he said, I can't wait to come home. The best part of the holiday was reading Melina Marquetta's The Piper's Son. He said, it reminded me of Somerset Maugham. It was so good, so moving. I couldn't wait to get in from the surf every night to read the rest of this book. And I really understand that because I think she's one of the finest writers in this, in this country. And I think this is one of her finest books. So they are my pick. Um, envelope, please. Oh yes, and here we have Kath Crowley, Graffiti Moon, <laughs> Sonia Hartnett, The Midnight Zoo, which personally I didn't think was as good as The Silver Donkey, but that's a personal opinion. Joanne Horneman, About a Girl, which is a really beautiful book about love between two um, teenage girls, so it's going to be one of probably your controversial ones in the CBCA. This one I actually haven't read, Doug McLeod, The Life of a Teenage Body Snatcher. So I'll have to have a look at that one. Of course, Melina Marchetta, The Piper's Son. And yes, Fiona Wood, Six Impossible Things. Thank you very much. <laughs>